Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today, in a very cold uh, shed, it's about six degrees, five degrees Celsius, something like that. I'm going to be wrapping up this uh, Hitachi TV. Uh, quite a few components came in. Uh, I've got another bag full of them. Um, so I'm going to get most of the components in. There's one or two which uh, I'm still waiting on back order for some uh, of it, and uh, I'm going to reassemble the TV and hopefully get it working. Let's get started.
Right, um, this is going to be the, uh, the final rebuild. Uh, I've recapped all the boards. Um, I think there's maybe one or two caps as original, but I think they're all done now. Uh, replaced the resistors, also replaced a couple of diodes. Um, uh, one looked like it was open, so it's possible that's what caused the whole short uh and the, and the caps to blow so yep yeah, it's the big reassembly all right let's get on with this thing and it's freezing in here so uh it's like eight degrees so i just want to get this done and get this tv up and working but what i want to do is just give this screen a wipe just the edges and get rid of all of the crap. Making sure I put it the right way up. There we go.
I've missed a few. I, f I forgot to solder those ones up. Just there, all the tails are still there. So I'm just going to fix that now. I am going to go and check the footage. I'm not entirely happy with just doing this by eye. Sometimes you can, sometimes everything's shaped. But this is a little odd in places. Some connectors look the same, got the same pitch. Like these two here have got the same pitch. I ain't going to blow this up. So. Well, not through my actions anyway. Yes, I'm going to go and look at the, uh, the footage on this one. One moment, please. <laughs> I'm going to try and start this up. There is a ground wire which goes between the neck board and the thing. I cannot find it anywhere. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if it's going to work without it. Um, so, little black wire with grey ends. Can't seem to find it. I'm not going to connect it because it'll either work or it won't. I just want to make sure that this thing doesn't blow up. I've got the tuner on this side plugged in, I've got my dim bulb, um, which is over that way. Let's just see whether you can see that. There we go. All we can do is plug in and try it. It's either going to blow up or it's not. I don't know which. So, yep. So, here we go. Um, it's going to Open the door. One, two. Wow, well, there is something there. There is something there. There is something going on. Um, might just be the dim bulb. Not enough. Oh my god, there is. It's there. Oh my god. <gasps> there we go. Right. We have something. Wow, we actually do have a picture. Oh, yes. Quite a lot needs to be done to this. That brightness, sub brightness is very low. But it didn't go bang. That's the main thing. Um, they either go bang or they don't, and that's the end of that. So, okay. Well, so, all right, let's turn off. Low. Right, let's... Right, I will be very, very happy if I can get something on this screen. Right. Oh, 
Okay, so we've got that there. This can be easy. Right, I've got something playing. Let's see what happens. It made the lights flicker. Wow, look at that. <laughs> it's not the best picture in the world, but again, there's a lot of adjustments to do. Really, yeah. This is the part, again, when I do something as extensive as this, without actually seeing the TV actually in action. Um, it's a bit of a gamble. Uh, I normally like to actually fix it and then replace, replace all the caps. But this thing was so far gone. Let's just turn the lights off. There we go. Yeah, this thing was so far gone. Um, there was just so much wrong with it. Okay. wonder whether we can find something which actually doesn't have so much white and blue. Let's try another tape. Interesting up here. No one Needs a lot of adjustment. Or I'll pull this trigger and be lost to David Jones' locker. Name your terms, Mr. Turner. Elizabeth goes free. Yes, we know that one. Anything else? Picture's a bit soft. And the crew. The crew a lot of this out. issue up here as well. Agreed. Very difficult to see in camera. There we go. Stop flickering. Oh, no. There we go. In person, it is quite dark. Looks slightly lighter in camera. You have failed me for the last time, Admiral. Captain Pietro. Yes, my lord. You make ready to land our troops beyond their energy field and deploy the fleet so that nothing gets off the system. You are in command now, Admiral Yet. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Well, thanks for watching. Um, I'm going to continue on with this. I'm actually going to uh, go through and uh, do a little bit of adjustments. I will do another video uh, for this, um, or I will continue on uh, uh, with these adjustments. I might do it in this video, I'm not sure. Let's see what happens. What's interesting is that you let it run for a little while and then it, the screen slowly darkens. I think that the that resistor is cooked um, and as it's getting warmer it's be, uh, creating a high resistance which is limiting the amount of current that can go to the screen um, plates inside the CRT which minimizes the brightness. It's the equivalent of doing that. Um, I've actually set these up exactly right, as you can see. It is actually just starting to slowly get darker. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, just getting darker and darker and darker. Right, well, the new resistors are coming in sometime today or tomorrow. Um, so I'll swap them out.
So it's been a few days, in fact it's probably about a week actually, uh, since uh, I was last on this. Uh, I've been waiting for parts to come in over the Christmas period. It's been quite tedious waiting for parts uh, from eBay and from Amazon. Um, the problem I had with the TV was that it was drawing too much current uh, through a resistor that uh, powers the uh, screen on the tube. Um, so let's just put that make sure it's right. Um, so what was happening was the uh, screen was getting darker and darker, um, and I couldn't exactly work out why. Uh, it would last about ten minutes uh, runtime on it, uh, and by that by the end of that ten minutes, the screen was t nearly black. Um, you could just faintly see some uh, raster. Um, so. It took me a little while to try and work out what was going on, and I also consulted Big Clive from BigClive.com as well. I asked Clive a few questions as well, um, just to sense check myself as well. Um, and essentially, what was happening was uh, there was a, a um, let's see whether I can see their focus. There we go. What was happening? was this uh, 0.068k uh, uh, w uh, res uh, capacitor was testing absolutely fine uh, on the low power to the low vo voltage testers. And I'd left it in there because I didn't have any of them. Because um, it's actually, for some reason, quite a difficult uh, value to get hold of. So on the testers, it tested absolutely fine. I think it was what um, uh, it's a uh, sixty-eight picofarads uh, capacitor, and it was testing at seventy-three picofarads, and the losses were about one percent, one point two percent. What was happening was this thing actually has about eight hundred volts running through it, and it was breaking down. It was leaking uh, to ground uh, and causing excessive current to go through uh, the resistor. What I'll do is I will put up a, uh, the diagram again. I think I've put it up already, but I'll put it up again now. So it was, uh, yeah, it was a, uh, that was basically pulling a lot of current through the ground and smoking the resistors. And the resistors are, there we are, as you can see, it was absolutely crucifying. That's, that's a, 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 an old style one watt. Um, then I put in a, a modern one watt and it smoked that one. Um, in the end, what I did was I, if I can just grab one, I actually put one of these in, uh, which is a, 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 I think it was about a three watt, three watt uh, resistor, and it didn't smoke it, so it got hot, but uh, it was still dying. The actual, um, it was dying, so I didn't realise. Uh, again, I was, I kind of tested this. I tested this one, thinking, yeah, that's fine. Um, and the only thing in the whole circuit was this. Uh, all the other capacitors were ceramic cas capacitors, and again, they seemed to be fine. Um, so uh, I managed to finally get uh, some stock in, uh, and I've replaced it, and the TV is working perfectly. I've been running it for about f five hours today, something like that. So what we're going to do today is we're going to basically set this uh, TV up, um, put a test generator on it, and just get everything all, all fine. The vertical deflection, not the vertical deflection, the, vert uh, uh, the vertical linearity is a bit off. So we're going to try and start with that, uh, and let's, let's, let's see what happens. Need to tune it in. There we go. Right. Okay, we finally actually got the screen rates. Good. So if I just turn those up. Now, um, what it suggests we do in the manual is to uh, let's set this.
Okay. Let's turn the screen down a little bit. Okay. Gives me some flexibility on that. What I need to do is really blew myself up. Just bump up the screen just a tad. Right. So it was the, uh, that one there. And this is a hot chass chassis set. I really don't want to blow myself up on it. I'm not in the mood for. Uh, okay, just using this. Uh, I know the vertical linearity is out, so let's have a go at that. Okay. This is the width. Right. So let's start the turn that down. We don't need no. Let's have a look. A little bit off. There we go. That's centered. Um, so basically, the center there's a, a little um, uh, pixel at the bottom and at the top. And in old school manuals, it actually says that actually where you should center the whole uh, screen up. Uh, some TVs don't have that, but it's quite useful for it to be there. That is actually the center of the screen, so we know that's centered. Um, right. Um, Let's try this is the second one. Mm. Okay, so that's the height. Okay, yep. Um, where is it? That is the horizontal. Uh, 
that's the horizontal frequency. Uh, yeah, we haven't got much. Um, Doesn't look too bad. Let's bring brightness up. So, not exactly got a full range, is it? Let's bring the screen down a little bit, the screen voltage. That's the tad. That ain't bad. <clears throat> it's a little squashed. So what I might do is then that's horizontal that way, that's that. Let's try this one. fact I'm going to bring that across that way it's not looking centered to me yep okay so we need to bring that one I'd say right there It's got a nice picture this, it really does have a nice picture. Um, so, yeah, I'm happy with that. Happy with that. Colours look good, all about the same. I think the red is a little darker, but it, that's fine. That's probably just the, old, uh, the pigment on these old 70s uh, tubes. They can sometimes be a bit uh, inconsistent. Yep. Let's try the next. I'm just going to bring that in just a little bit. What's that? That's it. Oh, I see. Let's go back a few. Yeah, that's pretty much there. The arrow seems fine. Still looks a bit squashed to me. <clears throat> I could be wrong. Frequently am. Tad. That looks more like a circle. I think that's about it. Let's turn the lights off and have a look. Yeah, even in the camera that actually looks pretty decent. 
Oh, so let's turn that. And that's midway. Wow, look at that. That is bright. It's lovely. I'm really pleasantly surprised by this TV. Uh, this is, it's turned out to be quite nice. Uh, yeah. I do think that there might be some sort of uh, magnetic interference from the speaker on this side, just here. Um, I can just see stuff. Um, it's, it, the colours aren't as strong on this side. What we can do is we can whiz along to the colours and we might actually see... Yeah, that, that's nice. That is really nice. Okay, yeah, okay, it got a little bit of ghosting, uh, but that's all down to the RF. Because uh, I'm going from a, a composite into an RF modulator and then into this. Um, but the linearity is nearly spot on. It's a little bowed here. But the linearity is spot on. Now, that's good. I spent the afternoon looking at uh, sort of elongated heads uh, as I was testing it over time. Come on. That's it. Mm. Mm, Grayscale's a bit off. Mm. Blacks aren't exactly black. Mm. Okay, let's turn the lights on. Uh, what could this be? Yeah, okay. Just a tad. Oh, I think it'll do. I think it'll do. It's a very strong tube on this. The whites are nice and white. Green, red, blue is all good. Not much bleed. Um, the black is black actually there, it's quite nice. Um, ah, there we go, I can see that. Now there's actually some, uh, it needs decausing just here. There's a little bit of, um, it's like a smudge. Uh, and that is the speaker on that side. So, yep, so we need a, a degauze. Green is good. Yep, that's pretty good. Again, if you see here, there's some slight distortion just here. And that's, uh, again, the speaker, which is, I said, just there, uh, causing that. So I think I'm going to have to get uh, my degauzer out. That's fine. It's only slight. Whites are white. Yeah, the frequency response across that is good. Yeah, it's good. I think that is spot on. So, yeah, the height is absolutely fine on that one. Yep, brings up, that's fine. Frequency response on here is excellent. So the tune is in good, good condition. Um, yep. That all looks good. Yep, it's virtually in the centre. It's slightly off, but I'm happy with that. I'm not going to touch it anymore. Come on, next one please.
Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Titles. Go off. Excellent. Yeah. So it's going into the corners. The geometry on this is excellent. It really is, considering that this thing was stuck in the loft for decades. <laughs> Absolutely decades. Um, yeah. Very, very pleased with this little television. So, right. I think that's it. I think we can switch the lights back on. Watch your eyes. <sighs> right. So, I think I can uh, safely take this indoors and plug it into my vintage gaming. Um, and that will do very nicely with the BBC Micro. It really will. Come on. I think the battery's in my remote controller. Give me up. Oh well. Right. Okay. Thanks for watching through this whole setup. Um, this is a, a was it CW uh, CWP one three two. It's a great little television. It's slightly old school inside. It's sort of a transition between sort of uh, more modern electronics and the earlier 70s stuff. Um, it hasn't got any selenium rectifier sticks or anything like that. It's it's pretty... It, it's not too difficult to work on, actually. Um, nice little form factor. Uh, nice size. Nice easy. It's, it's just a nice, pleasant-looking little television. Um, with a surprisingly good picture on it. Um, not exactly Sony Trinitron, but it's it's definitely there uh, with one of my better televisions, uh, non-Sony televisions, so very pleased. And I didn't pay much money for it. Um, probably spent about 35 quid in parts. Um, and probably about, was it, three, four weeks, three weeks, four weeks, something like that, doing it up. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. Um, like, share, subscribe, uh, please support me, um, I'm just starting out in all of this, so I appreciate any subscriptions, um, and see you on the next video.